This is Keith Price, Behind the Mic. We got a special show today. My man, an artist, a manager, an owner, got his own radio show. Been in the business 20 years. He keep on doing again and again and again. Probably introduce my man. Got a boy, what's going down, what's baby? What's going with you, man? Huh? How you been? What's up? What's up, man? Hey, let me tell you something. It's a blessing to have you on this show, man. Man, it's a blessing to be on the show. Man, man, you doing so much out there. I wonder if you had any time to even come on the show. Man, you thought I was going to make some time to come on TV? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, man, for let me real. ask you a question, man. For real, this this been going through my mind. How did you get the name Gutter Boy? Because it's different. How did you come up with that? Man, um, <laughs> it started. I used to go to rehearsal with my sister because she sing. Okay. And it was this, this, this it was this drummer named Gutter Boy. Mm. He was like the illest drummer I've ever heard in my life. And I was like, man, if I ever drum, that's how I would be. <laughs> he was talking about crazy, like rock star, black rock star crazy. And um, I ended up starting to do production, and I was cold on the mm -hmm. drum machine like him. So um, my name used to be Mac G. Okay. And you know I seen a lot of Mac Gs out there. I was like, nah, let me go switch it. So I ended up switching it to Gutter Boy, and I spell it a different way. So if you like Google me, you I'm the only one to spell his name G U T T A B O I Y. Okay. Wait, where are you, where, where are you from? I'm from <clears throat> I'm from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and um, man, I've lived a lot of places. You know, but Milwaukee, Wisconsin, I'm Milwaukee bred. <laughs> so, so I know you got the radio station, right? Right. But what did you do first? Your record. I know you're an artist yourself, so mm -hmm. got your. What, what, what did you start first? Well, um, I actually was a dancer at first. I used oh, to, I used crazy! To think I, was, I used to think I could dance. Pop you know? lock and all that. Man, I was, I was hammer time, man. I was <laughs> oh. hammer time. And then, um, man, you know, I used to dance with my family, my my um, my dad, my mom. And them, they always encouraged me to do. Mm -hmm. Positive, positive. Yeah, it was yeah. positive. Role and, models. And I thought I could do anything, you know, just, just because of the energy they gave, the, the encouragement that they gave. Okay. So um one day I had a uh a, a school a school show. Somebody okay. dropped out the show. This was elementary school. Okay. They needed someone to dance. I danced and then I rapped. Mm. And the reaction that I got from that point, <laughs> I couldn't do anything else, man. <laughs> so how did you get into the how did you how did you transition to the radio station? How how did well, you get that together? Radio was my backup plan, you know. Like my parents always told me that we always had we had to have a backup plan. Just in case it didn't work out. Just in case nothing worked out. Okay. And um, I ended up going to a radio broadcasting school um in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and then I ended up going to uh, uh, a community college. Mm. And I was doing communications there. So and I was like, yo. I want to learn how to speak in front of the public. That's crazy. I already was rapping in front of everybody. Yeah. I said, "Well, I'm I'm good at talking to people. Let me let me try this." And they taught us everything. I was like, "Man, I'm pretty good at this." So being pretty good at the, doing the radio at school, I was like, "Man, eh, that's cool. I'm good. That's gonna be the backup plan." And that, but I, I stuck to the rap. Mm. Yep, I stuck with the rapping. And now <laughs> with with doing the, you know doing the music at the time when I was going like super hard and I'm back at it. Yes. Doing the music at the time, it was it. it it, like you said, it was, it was you have to have connections. Yes. You know. So you made your connections. I made connections. I made some major connections. I got, you know, I learned the game the hard way. I should have listened to my pops and them because they've been in the game. Okay. We're gonna talk about that too a little yeah. bit later on the show. I, yeah, for sure. But um, I ended up, I learned a lot. I learned. I got, I got knocked on the head a few times. Got songs stolen by industry artists to this mm. day. I ain't gonna say no names, but. It was a lesson learned. So this is what you did. You're an entrepreneur, so you made it like a camel rapper. It was hard to get in the business. Right. So uh, let me transition and get my own radio show. Exactly. So you could play your stuff on your radio show. Is that what you this, did? This is what happened, right? When I um when I when, what made me really want to get into radio, uh, I ended up I was doing a lot of college interviews, going to college to college. That's, that's different. Interviews. That's yeah. different. I had like a college tour, and um I got on their radio station. Mm. And I was telling them what they needed to do. Oh, okay. Because they wasn't running it right. I was like, when I'm saying audio, everything, they wasn't running it right. And I was like, man, I can do this. And it always stuck in the back of my head. So a friend of mine by the name of Tony Bishop, and this was in a MySpace era, um, he had a radio, he got a radio show called XGFR. Okay. Okay. And um, I was like, man, I'm a, uh, I want to get an interview on your radio station. Okay. And he was like, yeah, come on, you do the interview on the show, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So I heard how he was doing it. I was like, man, do you need a co host? He was like, yeah, I need a co-host. Crazy. Yeah, so I was like, okay, nervous as heck on my first day. But he was like, hey, 
in one way that you, there's only one way that you actually can call. So I said, what? He was like, you need to give me some beats. Man. Give me some beats. You can co-host. Oh you man. Know? So how do you end up in Phoenix, Arizona? All right. So that's a story right there. Now I ended up in <clears throat> Phoenix, Arizona because I was actually supposed to move to Atlanta, Georgia. It was during the Hurricane Katrina time. Okay. We couldn't find a house. Mm. I needed to get out of Wisconsin because um, I had reached my peak in Wisconsin. I actually was on TV hosting talent shows yeah. and, and doing different types of stuff, you know, in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And I reached my peak. I didn't see I can go anywhere. Yeah. Me and my brother always traveled selling CDs hand to hand. So you also was a hustler. Man, you have to be in this business. So you packaged your stuff and sold it? Yeah, we packaged it. We sold it. Dude, I remember we ended up going to the Circle City Classics one time and all three days. We stood there selling CDs. All day. We all, all day. Twister, it was to the point that Twister <clears throat> had called us on stage because he seen how hard we was hustling. Man. Mm -hmm. yeah, he seen how hard we was hustling. And then we, we did some shows with Twister. Yeah. From that show, we ended up doing shows with, with D12, mm. um, Slum Village. Mm. Um, man, Slum Village. And my biggest show was Chris Brown. We ended up man. opening up for Chris Brown. For real? Mm -hmm. So that was Contacts. Crazy contacts, man. Crazy That's contacts. Crazy. And me and me and my brother was which his name is Reason, we was managing each other. But he was like, Hey man, you going so hard with your career, you we need to go ahead and get you out there. Oh, man. So we booked the Chris Brown show with oh, really? crazy. Yeah. And it was it was a blessing. This is when Chris Brown actually just started getting out there. Mm. So it was real it was it was a blessing just to be on that show. Um, I had a couple of people that was from making the band Get and all that, mm -hmm, that that actually was on the same show as me. And I think from that show they ended up going on making the band. Man, so to, let me ask you: is is it is it different here in Phoenix? Is is it a lot of opportunity in Phoenix than L.A. or New York? It is a lot of opportunity. You could have went there too. You know right, right. But you gotta you gotta think. I ended up like like I said, I used to live in Yonkers. Okay. On it off for six years, but it's more opportunity in Phoenix. Because the door is wide open. Oh, a lot of people don't man. understand that the door is wide open in Arizona. Mm. Phoenix, Arizona. So, yeah, as far as opportunity, it's great opportunity here because you can do anything as an artist out here and go get the fans. Mm. And my whole thing is, you know, what you go see with the campaign that I'm actually running, I'm on a campaign to, to, to get fans. I don't want to have I don't want to have a campaign for the rappers that do what I do. I want you some fans that get love your numbers up. Exactly. <clears throat> that love my music, that will come to my shows, support me. This is not just Arizona. We, we're actually going to be traveling to go everywhere. Arizona, back to your question, Arizona is a lovely place, a beautiful place to do music, to do hip hop, to do anything because it's so diverse here. Mm. So how did you get, um, so I, I, I've been looking at the radio station, numbers is up. How do you get your numbers up on the radio station? Because, you know, Twitter, Facebook, man, you going crazy on <laughs> Facebook, man. Man, we, we actually we actually travel. We do music showcases uh, in New York, uh, Chicago, Milwaukee, Atlanta. Atlanta is one of our biggest markets, and Florida is one of our biggest markets. So what we what me and my brother Mac Mon do is we go state to state with radio showcases, and oh, we give out give away crazy. big packages for the artists to win whoever wins the showcase. Mm. So doing doing that type of stuff, we got flyers, we got commercials, we got text commercials. Mm. Anything, anything that deals with social media, these people go see us. So we end up getting our fan base up that way, hitting the road. So, so what kind of music do you play in your radio show? Hip hop, R and B. What, what kind of music do you play actually on your radio show? Man, the content of our radio show, we play hip hop, we play R and B because it's based off of urban music. It's Emily Radio. Okay. The real home of urban music. Yeah. Um, hip hop, R and B. Gospel, we have a gospel oh, show. Um, we we actually switching over we to EDM. I don't need EDM. Mm. So it's we have a lot of we, we we're playing the most elite music that is out there. So how many followers y'all have right now as we speak on the radio station? Uh, and to be perfectly honest, we have a hundred and we have hundred and fifty thousand plus. So that that is a lot of opportunity for artists and this like I say our fan fun our fan base is like real crazy like I said for real yeah and, and I didn't say California we got a lot of people in California that actually listen to us mm -hmm. too so we the states that we see all the numbers coming from that's where we're going to do the showcases this summer okay mm -hmm. so I'm an artist say I'm an artist right right how can I get on your radio show man you can kind of do you man I'm sorry to cut you off okay. do you manage to I do manage okay. I do I do manage okay. um 
but the way to get in contact with us is um, you hit, you just send your music to MotronDJs at gmail.com and put Mixtape Monday. This is for independent artists. Mm. MotronDJs at gmail.com, put Mixtape Monday. And let us know what your name is, your song is. If you got a hot record, we go push the record with you. How do you have the? How do you find the time to listen to all that? So how do you pick? How did that go? Well, I'm picking the music to put it on the. Band? I have DJs that actually go through the music. Mm. So, so you got a crew, you got a whole family. I got a squad. I want to. I want to give a shout out to Champagne. Champagne, I got to shout you out. She is the program director. I am the CEO of the station. Okay. And a lot of things go through her. Okay. First and foremost, yeah. that's that's my partner. But my DJs are in control of all the music. Mm. So when new music come in, it's a yay or a nay. People may be a little upset because the music might not be mastered, mixed to the, the, the way it's supposed to be mixed, yeah. but it's a learning experience. Yeah. We actually gonna be, uh, Emily Radio gonna be doing a showcase and we're gonna be doing a workshop. Okay. Basically, to teach the artists about the publishing, the royalties, um, the, the mixing, the mastering, mm. you know, the ins and outs of the business. Because this, this is free information. God taught me God gave me the ability to learn and teach. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to help people get that information out there. And I'm opening the, the doors. Like, Mixtape Monday is basically, you know, one of our premier shows for the independent artists. And from there, they song get, if they're pushing it, and they song get a lot of rotation, I mean, get, if, there's, if they're pushing it, let me, let me rephrase. If they're pushing this song and tagging us on Facebook and Twitter, we see them work. That, in turn, get them to our DJs to get put on our premiere show, which is Voltron 30. And that's when we play all the interviews with all the major artists. Their song will be mixed. They have mixed in, you know, by the mm. DJ. So they see how they song mix in. It's basically giving them insight on, hey, my song could be mixed with this. Mm. My song could be mixed with that song. Okay. A lot of artists need to know mm. that type of stuff. So how do we get artists on your radio station? Man, all the artists gotta do is send their song to VoltronDJs at gmail.com put in the subject mixtape monday the name of the song and it goes from there the djs will review the song if they got a hot record it's on all we do is ask the artist to promote it hashtag i'm Lee radio that's on twitter and uh, facebook oh even you know, in instagram okay <laughs> so how how is I, I, now i heard you making a mixtape right now i heard a little of it it's hot okay, and, okay. And so how, how is that coming together man the mixtape is real crazy mostly original beats produced by myself and my partner cool water we, um our production company is called track fiends okay. i got a i got a i got a star static cast on there man it's you know i'll be naming some of the people real soon mm -hmm. but the mixtape is real it's, it's dope as hell it's something that you ain't never heard it's unique and man it's a real mixtape mm. <laughs> now th that's what i want to talk about man this is this is something crazy man let's talk about family now let us know about your pops man oh man and, and who is he and what he have to do with music and the business okay well man my, my pop sam pace my uncle Gilbert Moore, Alvis Moore, they're called the Esquire. Oh man! They made the, made the number one song in the Midwest called Get On Up. Get On man, Up in the Way. That's crazy. One of the first gold records to come in the state of Wisconsin. Mm. You know? And that was back in the 60s and the 70s. They made movies, they got in movies like the Five Heartbeats. Oh, Part of that crazy. movie was about the Esquires. Man. Not just the Dells, the Esquire. Mm. And it, they, they even saved the name in there, but. Um, shout out to Robert Townsend, you know what I'm saying? He knows my dad, he knows my auntie, he knows my auntie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> shout out to Robert Townsend, well, my dad and them, they taught me a lot about the music business um, when I was seven. So that's where you get your hunger? Yeah, that's where my hunger come from, like seeing them going to their rehearsals, making sure the notes yeah, is right. That must have been special, man. Crazy, yeah. man, yeah. when I say special, like everything I know right now is because of them. I learned publishing because of them. You know, seven years old, they talking about to me about two mm -hmm. points, making sure I don't, you know, don't get juked in the game. Should have liked mm -hmm. what I was telling you, I got juked, I should have listened. Mm -hmm. They was telling me about publishing points, basically how to go about everything when I was seven. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they would tell me this, but they knew that I, my, I had a passion for doing music because I had two boom boxes. Oh, okay. With the two boom boxes that I'll have probably one of the three instrumentals on, mm. and I'm taping on this one, That's and I'm crazy. making a song. And we, used to do, I used to do these pause mixtapes, and my dad just went nuts when he seen that I, what I was doing. Like, oh my God, my son is like really into the music, and that's that's what it was. Seven years old, 
Let me ask you a question. When I do my interviews, right, mm -hmm. and, and, and it be some good interviews, and, and like artists like yourself that got the hunger, man, what makes you wanna go on and go on and go on, man? Like, it's crazy, cause that's there's something, cause I, I can tell you what makes me wanna go on, but what makes you wanna go on and like, cause sometimes you get doubts, like, I don't know if I'm gonna do it, discourage. What makes your hunger, man? Man, it's hard. First and foremost, it's hard to stay motivated. You know what I'm saying? You get into doing something and then something new come out. You might not like what's new. So you have to grow to like what's you new. Keep up. You gotta keep up. And then, you know, it was, I ain't gonna lie, it was hard for me to transition to the new era of music and the type of beat making they make. So I've been liking a lot of stuff that's out here. So me liking a lot of stuff to give me creative juice to compete with the rest of them out here. So me being ever, being a self-motivated person and being positive, and I do pray. I pray on my career. God is good. God is good. And I pray, and I pray. And that's my whole thing. Now, my creative juices is back flowing. And me having those creative juices, my mixtape is bananas. You know what I'm saying? That's what we do. <laughs> so you're doing it. Man, I'm doing it. And, you know, like I said, you know, I haven't really came, came hard in Arizona musically yet. But a lot of people for the feel it. My stage show is bananas. You know what I'm saying? When I say crazy, it's not the ordinary stage show. My stage show tells a story. It's not like the rest of the artists that get up there and hold, mm. hold their gym yeah. Yeah. You know, I get out there and I, and I perform. Mm. You know what I'm saying? With a band or a drummer, you got DJ. So my whole thing is I want to make it special to the audience. I really want fans. I don't want. I want fans, mm. and I'm gonna go get the fans. And the only way I know to go get these fans is going to the streets. I love social media that works. If you are in these people' face, they go listen to you. Man, what can you tell these artists that's right now? Too, we on TV world. What can you tell these artists that this, that's discouraged? And mm -hmm. you know, sometimes they, well, I don't know, if I'm gonna make it. I don't want to make it. Then they, you know, so then they go back, right? Get a backdraft. So, what can you tell these artists to keep them motivated? First and foremost, believe in yourself, stay self-motivated. You know, in, the, in this music business, it's about you, nobody else. Yeah. Because if you do, if you're thinking about everybody else, then you're gonna be in the game 20 years mm. with no progress. Mm. And that's that. Believe in yourself and grind. Mm. Always getting people face. Mm. I don't care, don't be scared to approach nobody. Getting people face. Hey! I have good customer service. <laughs> <laughs> so are you working, so your company, you got, you working with your radio station, your mm -hmm. artist, so are you working with more companies? Or? I am working with more companies. Or veteran, mm -hmm. more partnership with I'm, other companies? I'm partnering, I, man, I'm partnered up with, in part, well, I'm in the, in the stages of partnering up with like 20, 20 to, 20 to 30 different radio stations oh, that's more oh, online. Man. So that's right now I'm at 100,000 plus, Ooh. you know what I'm saying? So if you think, I'm already at 100,000 listeners online. And then you got another radio show that's one of 100,000 people, you know what I'm saying? So it's just that big. So I, I basically build an avenue for me to be able to release my music, mm -hmm. your music, anybody music, because mm -hmm. we got radio. Okay. And with partnering up with these companies, it's, it's just great. Mm -hmm. And now, you're looking into TV. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> now we on TV. Now we we partnered up and doing some stuff. Man, yeah. you know what I'm saying? For let me, real. Let me tell you something, man. man I heard your mixtape, man. I, I keep going, man. This is crazy. You, man, you good, man. Man, I appreciate it. Yo, yo man, man. I need you. I need you to speak something, baby. Ah, uh, okay. You no, know, I do this. All right, let me see. Let me see. All right, let me see. All right, now, this is TV, okay. so bleep me out, need to. I got cash flow with a bath, with a so fat, now she can stash a whole ounce in that. We roll them good rips, we roll them good rips, with Pirellis on the tigers, but we still good rich. You're not a dollar, so you don't make no sense. I want them thugs for money, we make good sense. I ain't a player, I'm a coach in the game. Got my chick laced with nothing but coach in the game, uh. And we ain't hard to approach in the game, cause I got better leave the shirt soaked in the game. Whoa, and bad quit testing me, cause I'm positive bad news like HIV. I'm the HNIC, I keeps the and I keeps money in my life like time wanna uh And death to haters is hating me Cause I can't leave rap alone, the game needs me Ha! Man, let me say something man You see this man? 
My man ain't playing. My man ain't playing with the game, man. I'm telling you, man. He's here. Man, he's hot. Man, and you know what's the funny thing about it? He don't even need a deal because he's the deal. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm talking about. We working it, man. You know what I'm saying? I do appreciate the opportunity, man. man. Thank you, man. Let man. me let my get, voice get heard out here, man. Get them For some real. information, man, of your radio show, okay. your, your Twitter, your Facebook. Your Instagram, give them everything, man, because you need to be heard, man. For sure, man. Y'all can reach me at Gutter Boy. That's G U T T A B O I Y. That's my Twitter, and that is my Instagram. My um, radio station is I'm Elite Radio.com. That's I M E L I T E Radio.com. And then you can send your music to uh, this, which one? Votron DJs at gmail.com or Gutter at I'm Elite Radio.net. And make sure y'all get that as man. We on radio seven days a week, 24-7, mixtape money, Voltron Thursday, the baby dial and bubble show. Once again, I do want to shout out to all my Voltron DJs. I want to shout out to you, Champagne. Yo, Champagne been, you know, holding me down, doing what we do. That's my dog, my partner. If it wasn't for her, and I do gotta say this, if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be pushed the way I'm be pushed. And she's probably one of the most real reasons why I'm an independent person like I am. Because yeah. I do graphics. I do it all. <laughs> Word up. Let me tell you something. Yo, thank, I, I want to I wanna give a shout out myself, man. Thank God mm -hmm. for even making me come on the show to make it happen so I could open doors for others like my man. If you want to get on the show, man, you need to call this number right here, man. Get on the show, man. It's crazy. We're going to blow it up. Phoenix is going to... It's crazy. We're going to make things happen. This is Keith Price. My man. Gutter boy. Holla, and we do this. And we on behind the mics. Behind the mic. Behind the mic. Baby. Mama Moon TV. <laughs> Let's do this. God bless, man. God is good. Holla. What's good, peoples and folks? It's your boy Gutter. And this is Keith Price behind the mic. Behind the mic, behind the scenes. What's your story?